Howdy, folks. Welcome back, everybody. I'm T.S., and the color cast is on the air now for Friday night, the 7th of August, 1998. Friend and gifted comedian David Brenner is here tonight, and then from the program Just Shoot Me over on NBC, the actress Wendy Malick joins us, along with you on the toll-free line. Probably in your town they have uh, traffic on the radio. I guess most towns have that now. And what's interesting to me, uh, and I may have mentioned this before, every afternoon on the local stations here they mention where traffic is bad, and every day it's bad in the same place. You would think they would send somebody out there to take a look at it. In any event, uh, here in Los Angeles, it's been hot, not as hot as it's been back east or in Texas. And because it's, uh, it's August, many people spend the afternoons trying to get to the beach because it's cooler on the ocean, about 20, 25 degrees. And one of the main arteries to use from Los Angeles and the eastern suburbs to get to Santa Monica and the beach is Sunset Boulevard. Now, you would think if they were going to repave Sunset Boulevard, they might pick fall or they might pick wintertime when it's not raining, but they're repaving it now. <laughs> and I'm sure if I call down there and said, you know, why are you doing this? They'd have a very, very good reason. Probably because the guys don't want to work in the wintertime. But it is horrendous. You wonder what goes through the minds of people who make these decisions. In any event, before our show tonight uh, with David Brenner and Wendy Malik, let me answer some email on TV. Dear Tom, I enjoy your show enormously as you are one of my main sources for racy jokes. Your show is always worth watching because you never know. Somebody you think will be interesting is as boring as can be, and somebody who starts out to be boring turns out to be a great guest, Carol Dykes. Carol, thank you very much for that observation. Uh, dear Tom, remember as your last show approaches and you wonder whether or not to speak your mind, there is a not-so-ancient saying. The two nice things about burning your bridges behind you are the flames light the path ahead and it makes it harder for anyone to catch you. Matt in Victoria, British Columbia. Thank you, sir. The bridge has been burned a long, long time ago. <laughs> the giving tree has become a stump. There's nothing left anymore. Uh, dear Tom, the other night you offhandedly inquired to a guest, if humans have evolved from monkeys and apes, how come monkeys and apes are still around? The fact is that humans did not evolve from apes. Apes and humans have a common ancestor that both have evolved from them. Therefore, it is entirely logical that humans and primates can inhabit the earth at the same time. Uh, we're still working on why there are Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> Terry in Brooklyn, New York. Now, don't get steamed, okay? In a, in a recent television show in the UK, actor and comedian John Cleese explained three reasons why the British are superior to the Americans. Number one, they speak English. Number two, when they host a world championship in Britain, they always invite other countries. And number three, visitors to the head of state are only expected to go down on one knee. I'm Tom, you're watching CBS, and thanks for catching our pictures as we fly them through the air. <laughs> Would you believe that Wendy Malick has been a model, a soap opera star, film actress, and right now she co-stars with George Siegel in a very funny NBC sitcom which is called Just Shoot Me. And she's here tonight in spite of the fact that she has a birthday party for a little one going on at home. And Wendy, thanks for coming well, over. Well, it's over now. It's a bit late. Oh, well, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> it was in a full roar earlier. You, you know, Siegel has been here uh, many times. We I love know. it. What, what is it like to work with him on the set? Is he as funny off there as he, as he is here? Well, the first day I met I had never met him before, and I've Isn't been a, a huge, a, huge fan of yeah, his. Yeah. I mean, since Virginia Woolf, I just thought he was yeah. brilliant and has been in some of my favorite movies. And the first day he came to the set, I had to do an entrance from a a winding staircase and sort of make my grand first entrance uh -huh. in, during the pilot. And he laughed so hard off stage when I did it that I thought, my God, what a generous actor he is. I mean, he laughed harder than anyone ever had during yeah, any of the rehearsals. He just, guy. he's got an enormous heart. And the thing that I find so dear about him is that he's, he's kind of shy. And as, mm -hmm. as he explained yeah. to me, most people think that we're all extroverts who do this, when in fact, I think there is a, a bit of of shyness in all of us about being out in the world as as us and, yeah, and it's so much safer to to be hide behind a character and and uh it, it allows you to be much braver and bigger yeah, let me let know. me let you go home here for a second and reading about you you, you know, truly I, have country <laughs> life you, you have country life in the middle of the big city don't you yeah, yeah you've yeah. got animals and land and, and you you can ride horses on your land and stuff this is something i, I never dreamed possible when you're an actor who's not a a-list movie star you don't have much options about where to live other than New York and LA and I lived in New York for 13 years right in the middle of Manhattan mm -hmm. 
and moved here and sort of lived around town. And eventually we found a place out in the Santa Monica Mountains where I start every day shoveling horseshoes. Basically. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for sharing that. You're and, you know, there's no other way to put it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, there is, but it's okay. Well, there yeah. is, but it doesn't work. For I me. know. So in Horse the morning, pucky is good, you know. <laughs> road apples, as my mother used to yep. call them. Uh, my morning begins, and that's why I'm always so exhausted by this time. This is so different from New York, where this is about the time you go to dinner. This uh -huh. is when I usually am fast asleep. But at about 6:30, quarter to seven, you start I, shoveling, I shovel huh? the yeah. mm -hmm. duty. With the dogs, a friend comes over, we ride every morning before I go to work, and uh, I've been out with the animals before I hop on the freeway and, and go does to And does, does, now, do you have any problem with snakes and, and, and coyotes yeah. and oh, stuff yeah. out there? Yeah. And like everything, it, it's, uh, there's a price to pay. Mm -hmm. There is no free lunch. There is death in the canyon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have, we have rattlesnakes, and this year with El Nino, uh, it's worse than ever. Uh, many, many, many snakes, the worst being the babies because they don't have rattles yet. And I've been to the emergency room, I think, four times this season. Well, be careful out there yeah. while you're shoveling that stuff in the morning. Oh, yeah. No, we look very carefully. It's usually when they're chasing something else. The dogs run through maybe a nest of rattlesnakes, yeah. and that's when yeah. they get bit. Now, I understand that you met your husband in a very unusual place, very unusual <laughs> way. It was rather unusual. Uh, Mary Kay Place actually invited me to go on a, a trip to build houses for poor families in Tijuana. Oh, very good. And uh, it was a bunch of Presbyterians. And I thought it would be rather dry and took a little <laughs> flask of <laughs> scotch with me thinking, oh, my, they'll be singing Kumbaya around the campfire, which they did. <laughs> but oddly enough, uh, it was but a But you had a little flask there. Just, well, yeah, yeah, because I, I like to enjoy myself uh -huh. wherever I go. And you can do good for other people and still enjoy yourself. So this is the part of Nina that I relate to. Uh, so I went there. And in fact, they had beer, which was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I realized these were my people. Uh, we worked our butts off all day at the, in this tiny little village, a slum area just outside of Tijuana. But doing good for people who needed good, some yeah. help. Yeah. And learning how to build. I was terrible at mm -hmm. it. And I met my husband over the vegetarian spaghetti line. And that night, uh, I went out to pee in the field around this campsite we had. Mm -hmm and uh, sort of squatted down in the middle of what I thought was kind of open territory. And I, I heard a noise and saw a body move and realized it was, it was Richard in his sleeping bag because he liked to sleep far from the people. Uh -huh. He's like a Maasai warrior <laughs> who happens to be from Minnesota. But, uh, and we got married about eight years later. <laughs> but that next summer, that Does was the he... genesis of a very interesting, adventurous life together. He asked me on that trip if I would like to learn how to ride motorcycles and take them to Africa the following summer, which we did. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's been very interesting. Now, uh, his father, I read, was a missionary uh, yeah. in, in Zaire, which is now the Congo. Right, right. And you went back there and went We've to the town where, where, he, times, where he yeah. grew up. Yeah, he spent seven years there from like seven to 13, uh -huh. went to boarding school there. Uh, and this was the remote, very eastern part of, of what was then Zaire. And he stayed in touch with, with the people in that village, a very small village in, in a remote corner, and uh, has gone back several times, built a, a medical center there about 12 years ago. Uh, we took the bikes there seven years ago, and we went back in April of this year, right after the show wrapped, mm -hmm. and drove a truck in from Uganda. And, and he had the most remarkable reception but, you can imagine. Like, I was going to say, when he got back to the village where he spent his growing up years or part of them, did they, they must have remembered him. Oh, huh? absolutely. People came up and hugged him. They oh, cried. I mean, they knew his father and his brothers and sisters, and they've known him because he's been back. And, and how were they to his bride? They to were wonderful to me. And uh, they, they sort of greeted us. It was, it was the closest thing to royalty that I will probably ever know. I mean, we had to fly a plane in because we couldn't, we couldn't get through the roads. It had, the rainy season had begun, so we had to leave the truck until it dried out. And we flew in, got off the plane, and the entire village was there singing, Welcome to Africa, Welcome Richard, Welcome Wendy, Welcome to Africa. Isn't that sweet? And they yeah. had a procession and came up and gave us flowers and took us to a, to a gymnasium. And it was, it was just an astonishing yeah. thing. I, I was so moved. Was and, the and they said, Richard is our Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> 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 and they said, and Wendy's a movie star, which none of them knew what that was. They've never seen a television or a movie screen. But, Good for um, them, by the way. huh? Yeah, well, I'd be out of work there, but yeah. <laughs> and, and, and let me do the break just in one, in one second, okay? Was the whole trip that wonderful, or were there, were, did you have any scary moments? Always some scary moments. I mean, you're talking about an unstable part of the world. It, it was different places from the previous trip that were unstable. In the past, Uganda had been quite, quite nerve-wracking. This time, Uganda was really together, and they've really upgraded uh, all of their, their amenities. And Kenya was starting to become unstable, and as you probably heard today, the mm -hmm. uh, embassy was bombed. Right. It's, uh, 
that whole place is still in a period of flux, but the Congo was, was fairly calm. Since Let me take a fast break. We're chatting with Wendy Malik, who is one of the stars of Just Shoot Me on NBC. Back with Wendy after this break. With Wendy Malik, here's Pamela calling from Lebanon Junction, Kentucky. Hello, Pamela, and welcome to CBS. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thanks, Pamela. How about yourself? Oh, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> oh, don't be, Pamela. You're among friends here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would like to know, when she was a model, did she ever do anything radical to keep thin? Well, I probably didn't eat very much. Uh, when I was modeling, it was the late 70s, and, and the look was very... Verushka, do you remember Verushka? I certainly Tom? do. Verushka was this very gaunt, I and mean, she had amazing bones, but I mean very consumptive looking. Uh, it was almost like concentration camp victims, and the, and the look was to pull your hair straight back mm -hmm. and kind of do that slinky little thing and this is right before you this still is still do the that pre pretty good by the way i do it it's not bad you know it's like riding a bike you never forget oh, yeah. <laughs> but this was uh, shortly before christy brinkley and the all-american zoftig girls came along and uh and i don't recall eating very much at all yeah. uh which of course is not healthy and i happen to be a just genetically a, a slender person so it wasn't so hard for me but i, I remember seeing women who had real serious eating disorders and I think that uh, unfortunately that seems to be the look that's come back and I, I worry about those girls. Yeah, because it does have an undue influence on young girls who mm -hmm. begin to think that unless they're painfully thin there's something wrong with them and they're not beautiful. Yeah, and we have to all figure out what, what is right for us and our particular bone structure and everybody's different. And it's, what was the uh, agency you were with? Well, I mean, Oh, yeah, very famous. Yeah. Very yeah. famous. And, and when I first went with her she said, you must never tell anyone how old you are and you've got to practice smiling because you are completely crooked, which I always have been a swing set fell in my nose when I was very young and I think it just kind of moved everything <laughs> off to the, to the east. <laughs> and I, I, anyway. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Pamela, I'm glad you called and uh, don't be... Uh, uh, go ahead. I'd like to know, can I have your uh, autograph of you and an autograph of her? I, pictures, I mean, I don't have any pictures of anybody. This, this is my first time I got through. <laughs> <laughs> you have a family. <laughs> do you, do, do, do you mean, have any? Do, do you have any money? You must have some pictures of George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. Well, I mean, you know what I mean. I know I what mean, you mean. I know what you mean. I mean, I'm a uh, famous people. <laughs> well, I'll be happy to send you mine. You know, uh, and, and, for, and hers too, if she would mind. All you have to do is um, write to just shoot me. They always put the address on the end of the show, and they'll make sure that I get it, and I will okay. send you it. Okay, and I'm going to put you on hold, Pamela, and you leave your name and address here with the switchboard operator, and we'll get it out to you first thing Monday. Okay. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank it's it's okay if I don't come in on the weekend and do it, isn't it? Okay. Okay. I'm okay. Well. Thank you. Bye okay, now. Bye. Bye. Bye now. Uh, in any event, you, you you mentioned you and your husband had traveled. You were no stranger to that because, as I read today, as a model, you you traveled around. You Quite did a, bit, a lot of work in uh, in in, uh, in yeah. Europe. When the blondes descended on New York, uh, I then <laughs> moved further east and went to Europe. And after that, I moved further east and went to Japan. Uh, I used to tan very quickly, so they would send me off to tan for a day and then do the sportswear bathing suits on the beach in Spain or Africa or wherever. And uh, it was wonderful. I am so grateful for that experience because I saw the world yeah, and, you sure and did. could never have afforded it. Otherwise. Favorite place in the world that you saw? Wow, that's a tough one. Uh, certainly parts of Africa are as stunning as any place I've ever seen. Uh, I was in Afghanistan once in the 70s, which is a magnificently beautiful country. Very, very lonely, very, mm -hmm. very... Uh, extreme but very beautiful uh, and I love parts of, of Ireland and, and England and uh, the su southern France and I've never been to Italy which is so well you see I bet I've been there and once you go there, there once you go there it's the rest and of Martha's it. Vineyard in the old days it's like you were talking about yeah. LA that yeah. there was a time when yeah. this was such a great town and there still are pockets of wonder but uh, Martha, Martha's Vineyard in, in the 70s and early 80s, uh, I think. Anyway, is, thanks for coming over. I know you've had a big oh, day you're today. Oh, you very welcome. And, and I'm going to let you. you go because, you know, uh, morning comes very early here, and, and you know what's ahead. And even earlier for me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy Malik is the guest. The program is called Just Shoot Me. It's very funny. She stars with George Siegel over on the NBC television network, and you'll check it out. And we'll be right back after this break. Not a bad little show. Too bad nobody was watching. <laughs> McKay's over here screaming and we're on the air. Monday, General Perry Smith and the CNN fiasco and Rayford Johnson of Olympic fame. If it's green or wiggly, it's biology. If it stinks, it's chemistry. If it doesn't work, it's physics. Good night, everybody. <laughs>